where did you get cadavers? I don't blame you guys for not understanding because you guys haven't seen the amount of Ty Lopez courses that I've seen. <laughs> he said Ty Lopez. I've made a video reacting to unprofessional medical TikToks. How about funny ones? I'm sure there's some funny ones out there. Let's go searching. This is my first time. I can't, I don't know how to do this. It's, woo! Golly, I ain't trying to do that. This is questionable. <laughs> this is questionable. Honestly, the first time you do an ultrasound, it is confusing. I can relate to that struggle. And that jelly, it's just so cold when it hits the bare skin. Doctor, something's wrong with me. Explain to me what's wrong. When I touch my head, it hurts. When I touch my nose, it hurts. When I touch my elbow, it hurts. I now see your problem. Oh no, am I gonna die? No. Your finger's broken. <laughs> I did not expect that. People are so much wittier than I am. That's so good. I thought she was gonna make a joke about fibromyalgia and I was gonna get upset. Like you shouldn't make fun of patients. And she said your finger <laughs> hurts. That's really good. Also, there's a play on that doctor's joke where it's like, doctor, it hurts when I do this. Oh, okay, don't do this. Copay? Hi, I'm Dr. Jones. I'm an OBGYN physician. I'll tell you what I did today, but you have to listen fast. I put on a mask because COVID. I got some coffee because I'm addicted to caffeine. After that, I went to the operating room and did two surgeries, one major, one minor, before having socially distanced chips for lunch and doing an HSG. I'll tell you what that is another day. I went to my clinic and saw patients, pregnant and not pregnant, and then I went to my office and I charted forever and then I went to labor and delivery and we delivered a baby and it was super fun and now I'm going home because I'm exhausted. Mama Dr. Jones is a champ, not only because of everything she does in her life and doing it quite well, she's amazing at TikTok. It's a really good representation of how hard it is to be a doctor, especially one who's seeing patients in a clinic setting but also is a surgeon. It's not an easy life. Mama Dr. Jones is up to the challenge. If you haven't seen our collab, I'm linking it down below. Bro, sorry, bro. Your dad is dead. Oh, man. <laughs> Calm down, man. I'm the one that should be upset. I had to go on break right after. You know how hard it is to eat a sloppy joe after seeing blood? <laughs> Did he go quick? Oh, no. Nah, he took his time. I'm like, hurry up. I'm trying to go on break. He fighting. I'm like, let go, man. You got God on hold, man. <laughs> Did he suffer? Oh, most definitely, because he was screaming. I'm like, man, this is annoying, because I know the other patient's trying to sleep. I'm on the phone trying to talk to my insurance agency, trying to get my insurance lower, but he yelling, they can't hear me. I'm like, shut up. If it makes you feel better, I'm sure Mr. Johnson is in a better place. Wait, my dad's last name is Wilson. Oh, your last name Wilson? Oh, my fault. Your dad is straight, bro. He outside. Hey, you Mr. Johnson's son? Yeah. Your dad is dead. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. That was rough. I have to say, name mistakes in hospitals do happen. Like this is a real issue. In fact, when we have two people either with the same last name or a last name that sounds similar, we put on our floors name alerts. Like it says name alert above the patient's bed and when you enter the room so that these mistakes don't happen. And when people are uh, creating the person's chart, it has a name alert on it. It's like a bright sticker so that you're checking the right person's name. Hey doctor, what's that thing? Great question, young man. That would be the heart. Hey, doc. Scalpel. Of course. Doctor, I was wondering if that was the right coronary artery. No, that is the circumflex artery. Get out of the OR. Some doctors, especially surgeons, can be quite mean to residents and students, but they're really nice to those who are shadowing, trying to decide whether or not they want to go into the field because they don't want to scare them away. Plus, it's also fair to say that they're under no obligation to know all the important arteries. That person did ask what that is, and it was the heart. The one thing that I will say with quite certainty, and it's all jokes aside, is we need to end that toxic culture of like attacking residents and students that if they don't know something, they're dumb or they're evil, or we need to kick them out. That doesn't really work. It doesn't motivate you to do better. It actually kind of puts you down and demotivates you. It's no good for anybody. My Harvard days were my peak. God, those days were fun. Dr. Wells, where'd you go to medical school? I actually didn't go to school. I learned everything I know through YouTube tutorials and eBooks. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Like I literally don't have a legal medical degree because everything that I was learning in school, I was like, I can just learn this on my own. So that's what I did. I studied on my own and I worked on cadavers out of my garage. I'm like the Mark Zuckerberg of doctor people. Where did you get cadavers? And how are you the medical director at a children's hospital? It's illegal to operate without a license. Is it illegal to save a dying child's life? Yeah, for you it is. Dr. Welsh, where did you get cadavers? I don't blame you guys for not understanding because you guys haven't seen the amount of Ty Lopez courses that I've seen. <laughs> 
<laughs> he said Ty Lopez courses. Oh my God. Honestly, there's a lot you can learn online. And I feel like I'm about to release some merch soon, some limited edition merch about how much education you can get online specifically from watching my videos. But so far, this is hilarious. Let's keep playing. Knowledge will take you so far in life without a college degree. For example, every child that I save represents a new Lamborghini that comes into my life, <laughs> which is why I have 43 Lamborghinis in my garage. You took Ty Lopez courses to learn how to be an open heart surgeon. Gary Vaynerchuk was also a very large influence. <laughs> President's daughter has a puncture aorta. You two, sit the Be down. Dr. Welch, get in that operating room and save the president's daughter's life. <laughs> This is fun. Uh, yeah, medicine is one of those things where, why am I even explaining this? Yeah, you can't practice medicine without a license. And it's not because like the license is some kind of magical paper that actually proves you're capable. But when you're gonna, uh, you're about to trust someone with your health, you hope that they've been experienced, they've practiced, they've learned, they showed competency in these fields. So yeah, you want someone who's not only showing you a medical school diploma, but also a residency uh, graduation certificate, a board certification, like I'm board certified in family medicine. I have a medical license in New York and New Jersey. They ask you a lot of questions about criminal backgrounds. Where did this guy get a cadaver? Yeah. All right, be there in a second. <laughs> Your patient is waiting. Oh, my bad. No, 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 no. As funny as that is, that's not what happens. Dude, if we sat and watched SpongeBob or whatever for 45 minutes before going to see patients, we would be five hours late to each patient. Think about it this way. I go into a room with a patient. Technically, I'm scheduled for 15 minutes. My nurse has to be in there for the first five minutes, gathering the chief complaint, asking some basic questions, doing the vitals. That's five minutes. Now I have 10 minutes with the patient. Let's say I walk in exactly on time. I introduce myself to the patient. I ask them what they're here for. I ask them their name. I do a proper greeting to make sure that we're on the same page. I ask them what's bothering them. I ask them follow-up questions. I figure out how long it's been an issue, what other things run in their family. I look at their prescription medications. I decide to do a physical exam, do a few things to make sure I'm ruling out conditions that could be otherwise threatening to their health and to figure out what exactly I think could be going on. I then sit onto the computer and I explain to them what is going on. I explain to them my treatment plan. I make sure they understand. I have them repeat back to me the same set of instructions so we're on the same page. Page. I then place the orders in the computer so that they have their medications ready or treatment ready when they leave the office. I then go back to my area waiting to see the next patient. How much time do you think has gone by? I didn't even begin to write this patient's note and I can't really wait to do it at the end of the day because then I'll get home way later than I'm, I'm supposed to and everyone's mad because I'm missing schedules, I'm being late to the next patient and it creates a huge hurdle. The amount of administrative work that doctors ha now have to do is beyond anyone's imagination. Like spending 30 minutes making sure that my patient gets their medication because I ordered capsules instead of tablets happens way too often. That's why we're late. Not because we're watching SpongeBob. Although that is cuter and funnier to think about. All right, so Chad, um, it looks like you have a minor tear in your bicep. Uh, nothing too severe, but we're gonna have you take about a month off from any physical activities. Um, we'll bring you back in, we'll reevaluate you, and then we'll clear you based off of how well um, you've recovered. Okay, sounds good? Awesome. Ha! Month off! Does he not know who I am? Ha ha! Idiot! Ah! The funny part is I love that he's a Bengals fan. Shout out Cincinnati folks. This happens a lot. Most commonly where it's happened is around sporting events. Like if someone's training for the New York City Marathon and they come in with a serious injury, sometimes even with something really serious like a stress fracture, I'm like, do not run under any circumstances because you could fracture your shin bone completely. And people are just like, I don't care. I've been training so long, I'm doing it. That's obviously against medical advice. Usually they end up hurting themselves. Bicep injuries, oof, those can be quite painful. A minor one, yeah, no big deal. But I've seen bicep tears where the bicep actually ends up like up here. Ugh, that, that hurts. Don't tear your bicep. Check out these wildly absurd Instagram health posts that I react to here. Or if you want a good laugh, check out my most recent memes video. Click here for that one. Or on this one, which one are you clicking on? Stay happy and healthy.